Two weeks ago, I finally unpacked my most precious possessions. The few that were left after decluttering 30 years of emotional hoarding. A process that took me five years in total to complete. I didn't start decluttering with the intention of becoming a minimalist, and yet here we are. Five years later and my family of four decluttered our entire home, sold and donated almost everything that we owned, and moved to Europe with eight suitcases. Today I want to share with you the triumphs Okay. It's your house. And the tears, as well as the incredible decluttering results from our five year minimalism journey. So hit that like button and drop a door emoji down below if you are on your own decluttering or minimalism journey. And remember, the first step in crafting the life you want is to get rid of everything you don't. This is a trigger warning to those of you who are sensitive to content that contains references to death, grief, trauma, hoarding, emotional neglect, and other forms of mental distress. Please proceed with caution. I was nine when my mother died after a long battle with cancer. That's when we started putting things into boxes and I guess we just never stopped. My dad would say things like, just in case, and to remember her by. We got really good at putting things into boxes, even our emotions. I think I boxed up my emotions for too long and that's why they constantly spill out now. My father didn't talk much about my mother after she died. I don't even know how they met or how he proposed. He wasn't very good at talking. He was really good at collecting things though. Our home was a constant stream of new cars and collectibles. At one point, he had three Harley Davidsons and that was on top of all his other cars and trucks. Every Christmas, I got boxes and boxes of presents. I amassed a huge collection of Swarovski crystals, Barbie dolls, Beanie Babies, and so much more. My dad loved to tell me how much these things were going to be worth someday, that they were going to pay for my college. Spoiler, they didn't, but we'll get to that later. I wasn't allowed to touch or to play with any of these things. We kept them in boxes or nicely displayed in cabinets for later always for later. The year that he died, it felt like the whole world collapsed around me. I was in my early 20s when I lost my father, my home, and everything in it. I remember breaking down and sobbing on the floor of my tiny apartment because I didn't have enough space for everything. And a lot of it had to be sold or donated. It felt like everything was being ripped away from me, outside of my control. I never wanted to feel like that again. I saved as much as I could, but it was too much for my one home. What I couldn't fit got stashed in the basements and the closets of friends and family members. But it didn't stop there. That year started with the death of my father, and by the time it ended, I had lost eight people that I cared about. Clutter is a mirror. Our internal clutter is reflected as external clutter. What does your clutter say about you? I am sad. I am lonely. I am afraid to let go. That's what my clutter was saying. Flash forward to 2015 and I'm married to a wonderful man. We have just finished a two-year expat assignment in Shanghai, China and moved back to our small and cute condo in Chicago. The 900 square foot two bedroom in Chicago that was perfect for us as a newly married couple started to feel pretty crowded after the birth of our second son. Honestly, it was a mess. My husband worked long hours and because both of my parents were gone and we had no family members nearby, I never had any help and I felt constantly overwhelmed. A few months later, we ended up getting sent to my home state of Indiana. We went from a small 900 square foot apartment 
to a 1900 square foot townhome with a two car garage. I finally had enough space to bring all the things that I had saved into one place, but it still felt like it wasn't enough space. And instead of comforted, I felt stressed out and overwhelmed. There were always toys on the floor, appliances and baby stuff crowding the countertops. And of course, the boxes and boxes of sentimental items left behind by my family, hiding in the shadows of the garage and lower level. I didn't even know where to start. I was chatting with my neighbor one day when it happened. She told me she had downsized from a 5,000 square foot, five bedroom home to a townhome the same size as ours. And she had already made $30,000 decluttering and selling her clutter. I was floored. And I decided I wanted to explore this thing called decluttering. So I ordered a pretty little book. You might've heard of it. It was The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. I am so glad that I started with her book. Did you know that Marie Kondo spent five years as a Shinto shrine maiden in Japan? Her reverence and empathy resonated with me. Have gratitude for the things you're discarding. By giving gratitude, you're giving closure to the relationship with that object. And by doing so, it becomes a lot easier to let go. Well, letting go still wasn't easy. It was like tearing off a band-aid. It hurt, but I could also see myself healing slowly. Along with the book, I also ordered a small rose gold scale, some plastic mailers, and a torso mannequin I fondly called Marie Antoinette. Here she is modeling a vintage Adidas crop top that I bought for 50 cents in high school. Can you believe I sold that baby for $25 almost 15 years later? Slowly, lovingly, I continued to declutter. We moved two more times, ending up in New Jersey. That place was smaller so the clutter stood out even more, but I kept at it. It felt so good to know that I was sending my things on to a new home, a new life, a new chance to be loved. The kind and thankful words from the people that I sold to also helped me heal. Remember the collectibles my dad said would pay for my college? Most of them sold for less than a half or a third of what my dad had paid for them in the 80s and 90s. I hope that the people who bought my Barbies have little girls of their own and those boxes will finally get opened. The more we got rid of, the freer we felt. Doors we didn't even know were there started opening. My children were happier. We were happier. Something inside of us shifted. My husband and I made the decision to do something drastic. We decided to get rid of everything and moved to Germany, where my husband's family lived. My children would finally get to be around grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. I wish I could go back and hug the me from five years ago and tell her, it's not okay, but it's going to be. Hang in there. Our life now is totally unrecognizable to what it was before. If I had to use three words to describe our life, they would be peaceful, loving, free. Now I spend less time cleaning up and feeling stressed out and more time playing with my kids and relaxing with my husband. Our home is filled with light and laughter. From the outside, you might think it's too much space, too many empty corners. I know I get a lot of comments about the echoes. Sorry about that, guys. You can't see it, but that empty space is actually full. It's full of happiness and love. We fly paper airplanes and do cartwheels in those empty spaces. We build incredible things out of Legos and blocks. We collect moments instead of objects. I didn't keep much but the sentimental things I did keep have a special place in our life. I use my father's knife set to cut fresh bread from the cute little bakery on the corner. 
and I share stories about my grandparents' treasures that are proudly displayed on my bookshelf. My children get to eat fabulous home-cooked meals off the plates that my parents received when they got married. I have been eating off the same plates for 38 years and now my kids can as well. Isn't that amazing? This is what minimalism looks like to us. I am done putting things into boxes. We are surrounded by possessions that have so much meaning and history. But if they should break, I won't be sad. I will know that they have served their purpose not only in my life, but also the lives of my loved ones. The ones who went before and the ones who came after. My name is Marissa and I am a recovering hoarder turned minimalist mom. Thank you for listening to my story today. If you struggle with clutter, please consider joining my family on YouTube. And remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, but you don't have to walk it alone. Take care. Bye-bye.